I was born in Highgate in London and um, I um, remember it vaguely and that was uh, 95 years ago. <laughs> as far as my background goes and where I was born, etc. Um, the only person who had a, something to do with dance was my was my mother. But she wasn't qualified and she only really gave um, uh, classes to little children and ballroom dancing to men and that is in fact is um, how she met her my, my my father I had a terrible problem with my father because I only discovered that I wanted to be a, a dancer and when I was 15 and I was at a lovely boarding school called uh, Beedales and um, I um, told them I was going to, I wanted to leave as soon as possible because I'd, I'd seen this ballet that my, my mother actually had taken me to see and I'd seen Henry Danton dancing with it um, was that uh, Mona Inglesby company and in, in Les Silphied, I uh, was absolutely amazed at seeing Les Silphied. I turned to my mother and I said, now I know what I want to do. I want to be that poet on the stage with all those lovely ladies around. This came out at supper time when we got home. My, my father hit the roof said, no way is my son going to go on the stage or anything. He was a very good man, actually, but he was a, a Quaker. And I have great... I've I, 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 I become a Quaker. But in Quakers, in those days, didn't approve any entertainment really at all. And so I ran away um, with... Her name was Peggy Barnsley. She was um, uh, the daughter of a famous cabinet maker. Anyway, we went off at the crack of dawn one morning in February. We didn't have anything with, it, with us really. Not a, a little bit of food we'd pinched from um, school meals. Um, it was freezing cold. We got down as far as Somerset, getting lifts. We did it, stood it for two nights, and then we, thought, we, we can't cope with this. So we handed ourselves into the police. Parents were informed and all that. But it did make my father realise that I was determined to do this. And he said to me, well, you have my blessing, but not my money, which is actually is quite good. Because it, I, I, I managed to get a, a position as, a, as a, an apprentice in the, the ballet Yos, um, run by Court Yos. But I did learn a lot from Yos before I, before I decided. This won't get me anywhere in the end because I'm not getting us any proper technique. So I, I um, then managed to get myself a job in um, different, different jobs in musicals and everything. And I went to Vera Volkova's. Um, classes 
in West Street. And she was wonderful to me. She really was. Mind you, there were a terrible shortage of boys in the, in the ballet. Everyone was getting called up. She gave me free classes and uh, um, I really learned about classical ballet and um, went from different musicals and everything to, to get the, the money. And uh, then finally, I um, got into um, another company that was running then, which was, became a very good company called the Metropolitan Ballet. And of course, there was also a very good teacher there, Victor Krofsky. And he took me under his arm, as it were. And, um, and there's another chap who's also joined the company to get training. Um, so I never actually went to ballet school at all till later on, much late, much, much later. So that's how it all started, I guess. I did actually dance with Margot Fontaine. Um, because I, at that time, I was doing a lot of television and Margaret Dale wanted to put on a, a, a special production of The Nutcracker. The Sugar Plum Fairy had, had four, four um, escorts and I was the number one escort. And uh, so I had to do a, a short part of her with her. And I learned a lot from that because I, I was so amazed that I was partnering Fontaine. How, how did they touch her? So finally, she said, Peter, I'm a dancer. I'm not a real fairy. For God's sake, she said, let me see you're there. That gave me courage, so I took command then, and she was very happy. And I think that's why I then danced with her in the Sleeping Beauty. I probably got it all wrong, because I was the number one prince with her when, when she did that as well. Um, she was a, a remarkable, wonderful um, ballerina and human being. I adored her. Um, I was intrigued about, with, with choreography because um, I was ab about to um, become a television director because I'd taken the um, a director's course for, for, for the BBC and you had to do a short exercise, a short program of 15 minutes and a huge budget of 15 pounds. Well, it was, that's what it was like in those days. Well, I, as I'd done a lot of television, I knew a lot of people and I decided to do John Cranker's um, uh, Beauty and the Beast, which is just a, a duet. I was, I was very nervous there because all, all the other trainees were all employees of the BBC. But I did a bit of influence from Margaret Dale and Humphrey Burton, and they got me onto the course. And so I was rather the outsider. But I did listen to what they were. And we had wonderful lectures and demonstrations and everything. And I, I persuaded two, two Australian dancers who had just come over and desperate to get a bit of work. So I, and I knew various people on the technical side and floor managers and people. 
and they managed to get me to get a bit of trees and things to make it a set. I knew the, knew the belly myself very well because I danced the, the, the beast. And oh, there were, there were, yeah, there were 12 of us all together, and I was the top one. And they put, offered me um, a contract um, as a guest producer with the music department um, for two years. I got, got home full of delight that I'd achieved this and um, the phone rang and it was John Cranko and he said, Pete, I need help. I can't cope with Stuttgart. I haven't got anyone as a ballet master. Please come as my ballet, ballet master. And I said, John, I've almost got a pen in my hand to sign a contract with the BBC. John said, come over for the weekend. We're just about, about to have our annual ballet week. Um, um, come over and see if you if you like it and everything, because I said, I've got these two, no, Poppy was three and Jonathan was one. I told Sonia and we went off anyway for a week, for, for, it was going to be three days, and it turned out I stayed for three weeks, because it was wonderful there. And I have to say, I'm, that was one of the best things that happened in my my life and career was um, getting such help and he said, um, I think you ought to try your, your hand at choreography. Because um, he said he couldn't do it all and he needed someone to help with it and all that. My first ballet, and it was called The Great Peacock. Um, it was a very dramatic story of this moth that um, um, is, is born without a stomach and has to reproduce itself. It has only, I think, two days or something, and then it will die. It has to mate, but in that time, it was Yolanda Sonnevin that designed it. It was her first ballet she ever done. And it had, it had um, John put it on, and it made me believe that perhaps I might have a of talent, but that was the first ballet, ballet proper. But I must say, I'm, I've never really thought of myself primarily as a choreographer. I'm much better at looking at other people's work and sorting that out than doing my own. Because I don't, you know, I, th I think uh, uh, the most important thing is with choreography, you have to have ideas, not just put steps together, it has to have some sort of idea, whether it's abstract or whatever, like balance in it. But, um, and you have to have the... You, you have to do it. And I didn't have to do it, actually. I could do that. Um, and looking back, over all these years, I think it was that, that ability to see and understand other people's work and everything made me ultimately a good director. John had just done a, a production of Swan Lake, which had been very successful. Um, and he said to me, now look, Pete, you'll have to do Giselle, we've got to do Giselle, absolutely we need we need to do do all the classics. Um, 
I'm going to ask you to put it on. You can do exactly what you want. And I said, John, I, I, I couldn't possibly, I don't know anything about Jesus at all. In fact, I never used to like it very, very much until I saw Ulan Mother. Anyway, John said, I'm deciding for you, you're going to do it. I'll give you six weeks to go and do research in London or wherever you want to go. But the more I researched it, the more I, I wanted to do it, which was good when I, when I came back. And I had Marcia Heide as Giselle, and she, she was quite in her early days. And she, she knew a lot of, uh, about Giselle, because she'd been in the Marquis de Cuevas company. And I got Peter Farmer, Peter Farmer, who can't, could never travel by air. I persuaded him to come over and um, uh, design it. I think it was good when I did Giselle that um, I could sort of put right all the things I hated when the productions I saw. It, it, and I know I'm writing this because there's a, a book. I can't remember his name, about um, the Romantic Ballet. It gives an account of the original production. She takes Albert's sword and plunges it into her heart and dies. And that's how it was. And that makes sense because then, um, there's a reason for the willies, who are spirits of young ladies who um, died before their wedding day. So the fact that she's buried in the forest and, um, um, and completely unprotected from the willies, who of course nearly get her in the end. But if, if she'd died of a broken heart, she would have being buried in the confines of the church and the, protected there from the, so they say, from the willies. I'm a, I'm a bit of a romantic and I think um, Giselle is very, a very romantic work. Tornet is a, another very rom romantic story, but it, it, it's not, the choreography isn't, well I suppose it is, Romantic in the in the first and third act. I've done Solnate in Tokyo, which which I, I, I didn't go to at all. Dennis Bonner put it on me.
Well, I think really what I, how I saw it, I saw it as a, as the prince's story, but the Swan King Queen's ballet. I love the music, of course, love it. But one thing I want to do, I haven't dared to do yet, is to take those wretched <laughs> signets out of Act Two and make them into a, um, an entertainment in Act Three in black and gold or something. <laughs> because they, uh, it's... <laughs> It's always I cringe at the sound of <laughs> But the public, public, there'll be an outcry. They always get more applause than even a debt. Another of the classics that I absolutely love is Coppelia. Um, it's a, um, quite a silly story, but still, it has lots of opportunity for all sorts of dance and it all hangs in there together very well um, and it gives opportunity for different, slightly different interpretations. <laughs> I did, and I, I think I might want to do again when it, come, when it comes back. Um, I made it, the fact that it, um, Dr. Capelius, at the end, he, he, he dies, and His dream of, of Swanhilda comes true and uh, she comes back and takes him off to heaven. <laughs> but I think, it, and I think it's a, a marvellous role for, for I'm sorry, it's a very, it's a technique, it's very difficult, it's a very tough with all those solos in toy shop and uh, I used to love Pamela May and years ago she was very good and she helped me when I when I when I put it on she she helped me a bit with it um sleeping beauty um it's It's a fantastic work and I've, in my productions, um, I've changed very little of the choreography as we know it from the Royal Ballet. Um, and But you can't cheat. It has to be done, not turned down. So it's technically because it's very revealing. It should be because. Um, but at the same time, you've got to get the thread of the story and everything. And, And that, um, Philip Praz designed that for me. Um, and when Dame Lynette came to see it, 
She said, now, why is this ballet of yours, why is this not, why is your production going here at Covent Garden? Don't ask me, I said. <laughs> that Clara actually participates in act uh, in, the, in the second act that whole thing is together and I'm glad I changed Drosselmar into a um, well um, quite a likeable um, Godfather and I think it's what I'm also works well is to have the Clara and the Prince having the part of her when they're transformed because they're, they're completely redoing it in Birmingham They've raised, I think it's over a million pounds or something, from public money. No, it doesn't, not as much as a million, but it's a lot. Um, and so I'll have to get up there somehow for the technical rehearsals. It's, it's always so difficult lighting the, the ballet because you want the atmosphere and everything. And you want enough, want enough like to see the steps. <laughs> I think I was very lucky that my father was such a beast because it made me fight. I was only 15. I always managed somehow to stand up and somehow get what I want. In spite of endless difficulties, I really loved being director of Birmingham Royal Ballet. And that's why I keep my I keep my eye on it all the time. <laughs>